And we are there to support this family as we have this homegoing service for our mother, Matthew. So at this time, we're going to pray. Uh, we acknowledge again uh, Dr. Tamisha, Matthew, and Jeanette. We pray God's strength that he will comfort you and that God is with you. That's all you have to understand. He is with you. Amen. Let us pray, family. Father, we thank you for this opportunity and this privilege. We thank you for your grace and your mercies toward us. We thank you for your servant in whom has gone home and whom has gone to glory. We bless your name for her legacy and for what she brought even upon the earth and how the gifts that you've given her. We give you thanks for how she was a, a staunch supporter in the church of God and all that you've done. We give you praise and God, we just thank you for that gift. We pray for the family even as they are here that you will comfort them for you are the God of all comfort and we bless your name for what you're about to do. Have the, your divine way in this service as we give you all the praise. Order our steps as we acknowledge you. Let the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost himself, guide and direct accordingly. Yes. For if this is in whom we live, move, and have our being, we bless your name, God, and we give you praise in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 No other place for all my all my marriage. She's with her brothers, and of course, as the matriarch of the family, she's telling them what to do. 
We love our Aunt Mary. She was that, I can't even call her quiet storm, she was that quiet queen. She never had to keep us nieces and nephews in line. The only thing she had to do was give us the look. The only thing Aunt Marion had to do was only ever give us the look. There was such power and grace and fortitude. There was no more virtuous woman than Mary Matthew. She is beyond special to each of us in our own individual way. And as you know, our Christopher family was never quiet. And she can always moderate any of our healthy, let's play it that way, healthy conversations and debates and dialogues. Mm -hmm. Family, we are celebrating Mary Matthews' life. And our mother, my mother and Aunt Mary were very close, always very close. And some of you may not know, I was given Marion's middle name. I'm Roxanne, Virginia, like Marion, Virginia. I was named after my aunt. Because of their close relationship, and I hold that name with such vigor and pride, and it is, it is an eternal connection for me with Mary and Matthew. And for me reading this scripture today, I don't even know if Jeanette and Tamisha know, this is the first scripture she ever taught me as a toddler. And so for me to be reading Psalm 23 that we all know, Mary and Matthew is the one that taught me this when I could barely walk. And I had to make sure I used the King James Version. <laughs> there are so many other versions out there, but I had to make sure to use the King James Version. But please, this is very much a real and a sad occasion, but we have to realize her contributions. Even when she retired and she was so committed to New Testament Church of God, and she was tutoring hundreds of children that walked the halls of this church and the basement, her legacy will live on forever. The lives that she has impacted through Harrington Summer Primary School. She's an amazing woman, and I'm proud and loving and happily celebrating our amazing Aunt Mary. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Family, we love you. Tamisha Nicole, we love you. And thank you for all honoring and celebrating my Aunt Mary. Have a good day, church. Good morning, church family. Good morning. The reading from the early scriptures, the Apostle St. John, chapter 3. 14 verses 1 to 4 and chapter 27. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, to one God, Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mentions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Here endeth the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, of one God. Amen. On a personal note, I remember my beloved Aunt Marian from the age of five until this period in time. She was a bulwark, a matriarch of the Christmas family. She worked hard due to the fact that our grandfather passed and left his children with his wife, my beloved grandmother, Ismay Christopher, who worked hard and diligently and believed in education for and on behalf of our children and grandchildren for the preceding generations. It is our hope and divine prayer that the soul of our beloved mother, grandmother, sister-in-law, niece, auntie, friend, Christian, sister, fellowship, colleague, that our soul would abide in the bosom of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the ancient fathers, who prepared the way for successive generations. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Amen. Spend it a little, because I knew that this is one person that I gotta make sure I have all my facts in order. And I asked the question, she sat back down and said, thank you. Does it sound familiar? She said, thank you, and was satisfied. I believe you've been blessed, the Christopher family, to have a powerful woman, yet quiet, but her words meant everything. Her yes was yes, and her no was no. And when she didn't understand, you better come up with an answer. So on behalf of the entire denomination, and on behalf of all the pastors, the members of the church, we send our condolences to you. We'll continue to send with you during these most difficult times. But I know, like the, like the young lady said earlier, we know where she is. We know that she's rejoicing. And she's putting things in order in a quiet way. So may God bless you and keep you. It's our prayer as a denomination. Amen. This she invoked the presence of the triune God. And I don't know if you all realize it, but all of us are here because of her prayers. Somebody ought to say amen. Whether you wanted her praying for you or not, you can rest assured she put a prayer on your name. And so we're here with a spirit of praise and a spirit of thanksgiving. Jeanette, let me also extend sympathy to you on behalf of our Bermuda College family. You are not alone. I know that you know that we're just a phone call away and we'll be there irrespective of the speed limit. <laughs> but we're here with thankfulness, with thanksgiving today. I want you to know that I've had a tremendous respect and appreciation for your mother, because she was one of those persons that was even able to make preachers stand up straight. <laughs> That's what Bishop Minus was talking about. He now writes even better than he used to write. <laughs> I believe he even talks a little bit better as well. But we're here to celebrate 
because we know that this is not her aim. In closing, let me say, I believe that when her name was called in glory and the gates swung wide open, the angels that were on duty stood up straight because they knew that she was coming through the gate. And so rest assured, this is not the end. Family, just know that when the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ, she'll be in that number. She'll have the siblings and the generations of the family that have gone before her by the hand, but she'll be looking for each and every one of you. So if you're not ready now, make sure you're ready before the Lord shall come on home. God bless you. Aunt Marion was the matriarch of the family, the person no one wanted to disappoint or get that disapproving stare from. Although seemingly soft-spoken, her presence was always felt and she had the final say when it came to her brothers. Whatever she needed, they were sure to see that she got it. Aunt Marion had a way of correcting you without ever raising her voice. And I'm sure each one of my cousins can testify at some point of being corrected or received a lecture for some infraction that we had committed. Mine consisted of a phone call one day after I had been out in the club. She stated her disapproval and emphasized she was sure my parents would not want me in such establishments. The message was clear this time that our secret would be safe, but it should never happen again. And trust me, I was like, how did she know? And I made the mistake of parking on the street and she was leaving church. <laughs> and everybody knows my license plate, well, my parents' license plate number. So I thought I'd be smart and hide the car next time. <laughs> Aunt Marion truly embodied her mother in demeanor and poise and was the closest representation of my grandmother for me as she died before I was born. Aunt Marion will truly be missed for all that she represented and all that she brought to our family. And Hardy had a conversation with Jeanette the other day and in that he remembers his Aunt Marion as a powerful yet conservative woman who did not put up with anything. He recalls one instance when he wanted to watch cartoons, which was not allowed when his Aunt Marion was around. He thought he would sneak into the living room to watch TV with the volume down low, but it wasn't low enough as his Aunt Marion caught him and gave him that look. The look which Harley describes as more deadly than a cherry stick branch. Harley notes that Aunt Marion had the look, but Uncle Renty had the look and the voice. <clears throat> As an adult, Harley appreciates that Aunt Marion was trying to foster the enlightenment of one's consciousness. But as a child, he just wanted to watch cartoons or read the Sunday newspaper, the Saturday newspaper funnies, as cartoons were called then. But books were the order of the day, and it did not matter which day it was. He appreciates the sacrifices that Granny Christopher and Aunt Mary made for his care and to ensure that he had funds each semester to attend Barclay Institute. A particularly fond memory is an occasion when Granny Christopher and Aunt Marion took Heidi, then age seven or eight, to the store to buy a suit, made sure he had a haircut, and then took him to a photographer to have his picture taken so that it could be sent to his father, Boysen, who was in England. The care and guidance received when he lived in the Christopher household, and particularly the care from his Aunt Marion, made a lasting impression on young Heidi's life and shaped the family man that he is this day, that he is to this day, for which he is forever grateful. I'll do uh, my names first, and then Leah's with mine. Excuse me. Thank you so much, Jeanette and Tamisha, for allowing me to say a few words about your mom, Jeanette, and your mama, Tamisha. The elder of my parents' two daughters, I did not experience having a big sister in the same sense as did Wentworth, Ellsworth, Calvin, and Joseph. Neither did I have any aunts, However, my three older cousins very aptly filled that role, but no one to be my big sister. You can imagine how intrigued I was when I married Joseph and observed these four young adult men referring to Marion as their big sister. 
Even as the years went by and they advanced in age, she was still lovingly referred to as their big sister. It appeared to me that Marion was far more to them than an older sister in the literal sense to each one of them. She was special, she was nurturing, she was someone to be admired and respected at all times and in all circumstances, even when they dared to disagree with her. I read somewhere that the highest privilege there is is the privilege of being allowed to share another's life. And so it was that as, I met, as my married life with Joseph progressed, I began to feel as if Marion was my big sister. I am grateful to my dearest Joseph for allowing me to share his big sister Marion with him. A renowned French educator, Jean Masseau, said, gratitude is the memory of the heart. Joseph was not a loquacious person. He would speak only when he thought it necessary. That's a song of Christopher Tree. Song, just song. Song, song. <laughs> However, throughout our nearly 54 years of marriage, there were certain topics which he revisited time and time again. Such was his expressions of deep love for and eternal gratitude to Marion for caring for him and helping to shape his life from infancy even until the time when his life was coming to its end. Their bond was so infectious that over the years I could not help but develop comparable feelings for her too. My spirits were greatly lifted when, having heard of Marion's passing, I expressed my love for her to Jeanette, and to which she replied that Marion's feelings for me were mutual. While love is about mutual binding affection, esteem is the high regard that comes with earning a place of respect in another's heart. Jane Austen, author. True words cannot be spoken of Marion Matthew. She was held in very high esteem by all who had the privilege of knowing her. Indeed, her colleagues in education, her students, her church family, members of her immediate and extended family and friends greatly respected and admired her. Her indomitable personality captured my esteem for her in many ways. She was extremely intelligent. Her scholarship was second to none. She took great pride in the accomplishments of her family members. Sharp with it, you always had to be clear as to what you said and how you said it. She did not suffer fools gladly. Her deportment was impeccable, always elegantly attired with a gait, graceful gait to air. One of many traits passed on to Jeanette. She spoke eloquently, and I always found her voice to be calming and reassuring to me, especially during my very dark days of grief. She was very caring and nurturing. Just ask Tanisha about her early childhood with her mama, Mary. She was compassionate. I witnessed firsthand how she tenderly attended the bedsides of each of her terminally ill brothers, Boysen, Egbert, Elsewhere, and Joseph. She was strong-minded, how she stoically dealt with the loss of her young son, Jason. Eternally dedicated to the welfare of her family, she stayed in regular contact with her siblings and their spouses. <coughs> in later years, she organized lunches to celebrate the birthdays in turn of each of her surviving siblings, Wentworth, Ellsworth, and Joseph. They and she were the only invitees. After a while, she accorded the same courtesy to the surviving sisters-in-law, Betty, Eunice, Donna, Kathy, and myself, Maureen. Extremely determined, once her mind was made up, you could forget about trying to change it. I recall our trip to Boston to see Ellsworth in hospital there. I was concerned about the amount of time she was spending on her feet, walking to and from the hospital twice daily. She still insisted that we shop till we dropped between hospital visits and in the evenings. Heartfelt condolences from my family, Aaron, Tariq, Galen, Sarah, and Elaine, to Jeanette, Tamisha, Kenneth, and our other family members, relatives, and friends. Our, Mar our Mary was a faithful soldier of Christ. Her worship was most acceptable to him as it came from a thankful and cheerful heart. We shall miss her greatly. Take comfort in knowing that she is most welcome in our heavenly home. May she rest in peace, lovingly submitted by Marnie and Christopher. Amen. 
Aunt Marion was my favorite aunt. <laughs> As a testament to that, I, I just happened to mention to my best friend that my aunt's funeral was today, and my friend Vicky Perry is, is sitting right there. She knows how important she is to me. Thank you, Vicky. As a child, I craved her approval. I would always rush downstairs when she lived downstairs, or later to pick up the phone to tell her about everything that happened at school. Every little thing, poor Aunt Marion. <laughs> I looked at the obituary at how Aunt Marion had Jeanette, Jason, and Tamisha doing morning school all during the summer. They're so lucky. Well, <laughs> Kevin might not think so, but I think very, they were very lucky. She used to carry us around in her then very fashionable Volkswagen Beetle because we didn't have a car back then. Um, I thought we were traveling in style. She used to pick me up after school and listen to everybody talk about um, disapproving looks and all that sort of stuff. I might be the only cousin who got spanks from Mom uh, Marion. What? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were, they were kind of loving spanks because um, I used to go to Central. She was teaching at Delwood at the time and she used to pick me up after school in her Volkswagen Beetle. And of course, I was really happy to see her. So one day I ran out of school, went straight across the street, cars slammed brakes, got in her car, I was smiling and grinning, and she took off her shoe. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I go through Glee Road, I remember Aunt Mary. <laughs> it was love. <laughs> she had lots of books, which was right up my alley. That was great. But most importantly, she broke the mold. After my brother, there was an endless list of boy cousins and football and cricket. But finally she had Jeanette and restored order. Yes. I was looking at the program again before I came in and I saw a picture of Aunt Mary with, a, with an afro. <laughs> and that made me cast my mind back. Well, I don't remember Aunt Mary with an afro. That's probably before my time. But um, it did cast my mind back to a conversation that I had with Dr. Harulu Kamar Kofuego, otherwise known as Roosevelt Brown, who organized the International Black Power Conference they had in Bermuda back in 1959. And we were looking at a photo album of the people who had gone and participated. And Aunt Marion was right there with everybody else. Um, and participating, uh, Pop, uh, Roosevelt Ruse, <laughs> spoke very fondly of her. So the way I look at it is, she was a quiet warrior, even back then. The most memorable feature about Aunt Marion for me is her wry laugh and chuckle. There's something about it. You always felt like she knew something that you didn't know about a situation. It always kind of stop me in my tracks and made me think twice about what I had said or done. It's, I guess, perhaps, that's me craving approvals still after all these years, but she did use that, what I call a superpower, to great measure. Several years ago, during one of our family lunches at Janeer's house, I was speaking about how lucky I was to have and enjoy the life that I'm living. And she shook her head disapprovingly and told me, that's not luck, that's grace. <laughs> and we had a conversation about that, and of course, by that she meant God's grace, and we talked about what that meant. So again, she stopped me in my tracks and shared her thoughts about it. And suffice it to say that this conversation had me step, I got my own personal spiritual journey that I had stepped off some 35 odd years before, um, in fact, I go to St. Peter's. I go to St. Peter's. We share our church. <laughs> um, I go to St. Peter's, um, and that was largely as a result of the conversation that I I had with Aunt Maria that day. So you see, she did understand something that I didn't quite understand. She remained a warrior, just a different kind of warrior. Listening to all the bishops talking this morning. I will carry her with me forever and remember her. Thank you.
Amen. I also have my dad's tribute to my Aunt Marion that I'm reading on his behalf. Her last remaining brother, Wentworth Christopher. I am compelled to express my love, admiration, and respect for my big sister, which she earned by the care she showered on me and my brothers from an early age. Family circumstances placed a heavy burden on Mary when she was a 10-year-old schoolgirl, but she never complained. She became a second mother to me and my younger brothers, of which there were three, while our actual mother was away from our home, working a few jobs daily to support the family. I think my dad would have me speak more slowly because I, I really need fast. Sorry about that, pops. <laughs> I slow down. <laughs> we grew up proud and protective of our Marion, but she never lost that role as second mother. I can recall that when I was 63 years old, a father and a grandfather, I was standing outside of PLP headquarters, talking with a group of friends while smoking a cool cigarette. <laughs> Thinking it was cool, I guess. I happened to glance in the direction of the spinning wheel nightclub and saw a tan colored Volkswagen, which I recognized as Marion's car immediately. I quickly dropped the cigarette like I was 12 again and stamped it out on the ground. <laughs> My mates laughed at me while she busily went on to get her hair done in a nearby salon. I didn't mind. There was no way that either myself or any of my younger brothers would let Marianne see any of us doing anything of which she would disapprove. In later years, we would go out to lunch together when the birthday of each of us remaining came around. We would reminisce about the early years and be thankful because of the challenges that we had overcome. I am thankful that she was in our lives. Her impact was great. Now, as she departs this world, having been a loyal and dutiful servant, her very personal journey continues into the glittering light of God's glory. We who remain can reflect on how we deal with our lost thus. We can shed tears that she is gone, or we can smile because she has lived. We can close our eyes and pray that she will come back or we can open our eyes and see all that she has left. Our hearts can be empty because we cannot see her, or our hearts can be full because of the love we shared. We can turn our backs on tomorrow and live in yesterday, or we can be happy tomorrow because of the yesterdays. We can remember her and only that she is gone, or we can cherish her memory and let it live on. We can cry and close our minds, be empty and turn our backs. Or we can do what she would want, smile, open our eyes, love, and go on. Rest in peace, big sister. Thank you. <laughs>